please stand as you're able to do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Take the word of Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Give us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall you exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then, then there... Try again. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those who sowed with tears will reap with shouts of joy. Those who go off weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. 
He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for the one who... For those who sent us, what, who, what do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if neither you are the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. Where's Joan? Joan, you... Uh... You started your reading from Isaiah today with Ruach, right? That's how you started it? Is that the word you said? No. <laughs> Maybe you read the wrong reading. You might not have known you read it, Joan, but it was there. Ruach. Breath. Ruach is the Hebrew word for breath. As in breath. But this is my human breath. I mean, my human breath is somewhat powerful. I can blow birthday candles out with my breath. But at 40, not all of them at the same time go out anymore. It's like two or three breaths. And with my breath, I can make noises come out of this face when I preach a sermon also can be somewhat powerful depending on what I say, but breath, ruach, the word that the prophet Isaiah is using at the beginning of chapter 61. He isn't referring to his own human breath. Ruach Adonai Yahweh. These, if we were to read it in Hebrew, are the first three words of Isaiah chapter 61. I, Joan, you didn't say those words today, right? Well, if you read it in Hebrew, those would have been your words. Ruach, breath. Adonai, Lord. Yahweh, God. The breath of the Lord God. I see Dennis looking over there at that. It doesn't say the breath of the Lord God, does it? I'll get to that. Don't worry. <laughs> but my breath, that is my breath. So the Lord God's breath, it's got to be a little more powerful than that, right? Yes, I see some nodding. Okay. All right. You're like, what is he doing? The breath of the Lord God. <laughs> what? It's what? Okay. That. That is more like the breath of the Lord God. Except for like times a billion. Because, because the breath of the Lord God, I think, is probably an unfathomable breath. <laughs> The same Lord God the prophet is talking about, this, this same Lord God that is, this, this same Lord God is in fact the same Lord God that triumphed over Pharaoh by leading the Israelites to the dry land of the Red Sea. Now, why do I bring that up? Because after this happened, Moses, Moses was singing a song of thanksgiving that you can read. Or sing with him, I don't know, in Exodus chapter 15. And this is what he says. 
He says, at the blast of your nostrils, the water, the waters of the Red Sea piled up. Blast. This English word, the Hebrew behind this word is ruach. Ruach. Say it loud. Ruach. Yes. Blast. Ruach. That's right. Ruach. Breath. The powerful breath of Moses' God, our God. Isaiah's God. And as Dennis was paying close attention, you might be wondering, but the passage from Isaiah today doesn't begin with the words, the breath of our Lord God. It says, it's, it, it, it's, it's ruach, blast, breath, spirit, spirit. So let's translate this Hebrew uh, of these first few verses ourselves which we're allowed to do. It's not, you know, we are allowed to do this. We did it in <laughs> seminary all the time. That's why they tried to teach me Hebrew. So let's translate it and give these verses a little bit more umph, okay? The Lord God breathed God's spirit upon me. We can imagine Isaiah saying that. It's a little more, it's a little different than this literal NRS, our NRSV translation, but it, it shows God's activity, what God is doing. And if we continue in this verse, we hear the prophet say, I'm going to skip a little bit, Dennis, since you're following me along. <laughs> God has sent me. So combining that with the first bit of our translation and the passage from Exodus that I read, I think we can still faithfully translate this verse. At the blast of God's nostrils, the Lord God's spirit is upon me, sending me forth. That really paints quite a picture for us, I think. We can, we can envision, envision what this ruach, what this breath, what this spirit of the Lord God is doing. The same ruach, the same breath that is so powerful to, to part the Red Sea, to pile up the waters. This blast of God's nostrils is sending Isaiah forth. So powerful that I made all of you move to the back. But it's, but it's that times a billion. But sending him forth to do what exactly? What? Uh-oh. What exactly? Well, to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, to release the prisoners, to comfort those who mourn. Well, that's quite a list. That sounds simple, right? How is just one prophet expected to do all of that with his measly, wimpy human breath? Or, you know, his uh, blast of God's nostrils, the Lord God's spirit, it was upon me, says, says Isaiah. And with God behind me, with the breath of the spirit at my back, I am sent forth and able to proclaim the good news to the oppressed, the captives, the brokenhearted, those who mourn, not my work, but God's work, says Isaiah. God's work through the spirit, the breath of of the Lord is behind Isaiah, sending him forth. And as Christians, we love this text, I think. We love this text because, let's be honest, we're just a bunch of do-gooders, right? We're a bunch of suck-ups. We try to suck up to God. You know, even as Lutherans, we are supposed to reject works righteousness. You do reject works righteousness, don't you? You can't earn your own salvation. You know that, right? Right? <laughs> we do think it is our job to fix this world. We think this prophecy from Isaiah is fulfilled in us doing stuff, in us doing good works. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do while we wait for Jesus to show up, while we wait for Jesus to fully bring his kingdom into being, right? To make the world better. That's, that's a good argument. We fulfill this prophecy, is what we tell ourselves. Except, 
except this very prophecy in Luke chapter 4. You remember that one? Jesus unrolls the scroll of Isaiah. He proclaims these very same words. He rolls it back up. He takes a seat. He allows the suspense to build. And when everyone's looking at him, he says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Not your doing, in your hearing. This prophecy is fulfilled in Jesus' coming, not in our doing. But, you might argue with me, are we just supposed to sit back and twiddle our thumbs until, until, we, until Christ returns to this earth? Jesus already proclaims release to the captives. Nothing for us to do, right? Of course not. So what's this in-between space that we live in? How do we reconcile this? Not our work, but Jesus' work, but there's still something for us to do. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's very confusing. So I will look to our bishop... <laughs> Bishop Daniel for some help. So during my installation service, which again, I'm sorry, I don't know about, he said these words. He said, like the next 200 words are his. It's a great sermon. Jesus reminds us again and again that we are the people of God, blessed with the promise that God is God and that we are God's people. That God loves you with a love that will never let you go in order that you might love one another, the community and the world. We, and that's you and me, are the people of God, a, a people entrusted with the message and a miss, mission. A message and a mission. The message is pretty simple. And if no one's told you yet, the tomb is empty. The one who was crucified now lives. And the truth of that message, it changes everything. The mission is to be sent with the message and to partner with the living God to completely transform the world. Here's my favorite part. He says, and here I thought it was all about me. And you may have thought that it was all about you. When all along, from the very beginning, God has had this awesome plan to recreate and renew, to transcend and transform everything and everyone, all creation, all the world, all nations, all tribes, all people. And here's the best part. God is going to use us to do it. That's God's plan. There is no plan B. There's just a plan U and a plan B. And me and you, we are more than enough, especially, especially when the Holy Spirit enters. <laughs> Except for he didn't get out a leaf blow. Okay. So I can't say it any better than that. But I can, I think, demonstrate what it means. Ruach God and I, Yahweh, the breath of the Lord God, the spirit of the Lord God is going to use us, to send us. And by us, you're like, what's he doing now? <laughs> by us, <laughs> I think he means toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. Now, to be clear, this is new, unused rolls of toilet paper. This is not... Used up, you know, ready to get flushed toilet paper. But toilet paper. Now, this toilet paper, let's see what my wimpy, can't even blow out 40 birthday candles breath is able to do to it. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. So, Allow me to re repeat this last line from the bishop. There's a plan you and a plan me. We are more than enough, especially when the Holy Spirit enters in. Come on. <laughs> Come on, it's easy. It's fun. Here, all you got to do is hold it. Oh, it's going to be great. 
You weren't here on Cheerio Day. <laughs> Like, is it gonna go in the fan? Oh That's fine. The fan's fine. Here, let's do it. We gotta finish that, right? <laughs> Hold on the fan. Now, what you say? The the Holy Spirit is a little more powerful, a little more powerful than we are. Ruach, God, and I, Yahweh, the breath of the Lord God, the, the spirit of the Lord God, the blasting of the God's nostrils, sending us forth by the power of the Holy Spirit, except that times a billion, except actually that times 2.6 billion, because that's the number of Christians in this world. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the spirit of the Lord God, Ruach Adonai Yahweh. And when we get out of the way and let God work in and through us, this hard work, the proclamation of the good news, of the release of the captives and prisoners, well, it just doesn't seem so hard anymore. Because it's God's work. No. Jesus, the good news, shows up through our proclamation as we are sent forth by the Holy Spirit. And now, you may be asking, set forth to do what? I'll get there in a second. But I want to make this about you and about me for a minute. Because as I said earlier, and I'm not apologizing, and I still believe it, we are do-gooder Christians. We are fixers. We want to fix the world. But I have a question for you. If you are broken... How well can you fix? I have another question. What holds you captive? What holds you prisoner? What causes you to mourn? Sometimes we're so focused and so fixated on helping the other that we forget that this good news, it is for us too. You know, you know, there's something in my life that has in the past and probably will into the future hold me captive. Okay? And that thing is anxiety. So two years ago, two years ago, I had a seizure. It was my last seizure. I have epilepsy. And that seizure caused me to be crippled by anxiety. And you know what I found? You know what I found? Until I opened myself, and it took me some time, because I'm a fixer, I'm a do-gooder, I don't want anybody to help me, I don't need any help. But until I opened myself to others being Christ to me, and that includes a counselor, doctors, family, friends, a church family. That's right, let me repeat, a counselor. Yes, it's okay, we're allowed to have counselors and therapists. I could absolutely not be Christ to the other, at least not the way I wanted to be and the way I believe God is calling me to be. So us do-gooders and us fixers, we need this good news and release too because we are Jesus. Repeat it with me. We are Jesus. This prophecy isn't fulfilled in our reading of it. We need Jesus too. And when we receive Jesus, only then can we be sent forth by the Spirit to be Jesus to the other. Which brings me to, lecture over, which brings me to who is this other? It is different for each and every one of us. Last week we talked about contextuality. I think it was last week. You may come across others in your life that, that I don't simply because we don't have the same vocation. We have others in our individual lives. We have others in our lives as congregation. Who needs this good news? Who needs Jesus? Who is the oppressed, the brokenhearted, the captive? Who needs to experience through us? And if you're not sure... 
Stay open. Oh, be quiet. And if you're not sure, stay open to the work of the Holy Spirit. Look for the work of the living God, not just here on Sunday, but on the, in the course of your daily life, out there, every day. And you will find that other, I will guarantee. And that leads me to my final point. These others, the oppressed, the brokenhearted, the captive. Our call is bigger than just to minister to them. Just to, to feed the hungry, right? The call is for release. The call is for release. Release is the good news Jesus Christ brings. Isaiah paints a, a brilliant picture today. Offering a vision of the future for the prisoners, the oppressed, and the captives. He says this, these prisoners will be called oaks of righteousness. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They themselves shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. The Spirit of God sends us forth not just to sustain the other, but to release the other, to release the other. And once released, once they have been set free by the good news that is made available to them and to us only through Jesus Christ, they too will find themselves called and sent, called and sent by Ruach Adonai Yahweh, the Spirit of the Lord God. That is God's plan. There is no plan B. There's only a plan you, a plan me, and and you and me, we are absolutely, absolutely enough when we are open to the sending of the Spirit of the Lord God, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And for that, I say, thanks be to God. Amen. And this time I will pick up after myself. It's much easier this time. <laughs> Please join me as we confess together what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is with hope and expectation that we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await the day of God's restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. We especially lift in thanksgiving today, uh, Dale, Ronnie, Hannah, and, and for the birth of great-grandchildren. 
Give our church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, let the trees of the field sing your praise. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from diseased and deforestation. Keep us grateful for their gifts of oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Merciful God, you love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence may wither away. Today, we raise our voices and kneel down in prayer for our country, this country, as this country, we know that it can be a force for good in this world. Please use us. Please send us to be your hands and feet in this world. Merciful God, give us strength to pray for our world without ceasing and provoke us to love uh, toward love and good deeds for all who are in need. In need especially for the health of Bob, Jim and Donna, Jim, Joanne, Marcella, Chuck, Mel and Julie, Dale, Ronnie, and for Bob who will undergo surgery, provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care, empower us as helpers and advocates. Merciful God, Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, advocates, and those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. Merciful God. With gratitude, we rejoice in the saints who witnessed to your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your gladness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through, <clears throat> through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table where all are welcome, and taste and see the goodness of the Lord.
This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Please stand as you're able to do so. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. We here at St. Paul Lutheran Church want to thank you for viewing our Sunday service. We have delayed video coverage on YouTube on our channel, St. Paul NR. Here is where you will find a lot of older videos of our church family. Also, please check out our Facebook page at St. Paul NR. If you want to join us in person, we are located in North Robinson, Ohio. Our Sunday service starts at 8.30 a.m. The church address is 2307 Main Street, which is State Route 602. We are six and a half miles from Galleon, Ohio, and seven miles from Bucyrus, Ohio. Thank you again for joining us and we hopefully will see you again, either here or in person.